in this short video, we're just going to quickly walk through how to enter your records for the Batson Churcher study. As you're watching this video, I can guess that you've probably already taken part in the Batson Churcher study and that you've surveyed a church near you. So thank you very much. We really do appreciate that. The first thing to do is to go to the um, web portal and you can do that by going to batsonchurches.bats.org.uk. You come to this web portal and, and you can see a button on the right hand side of the screen saying log in. So I'm going to log in now. If you have forgotten your password, don't worry. And um, there is a button down here to activate your account. And that will send an email to your inbox. And it should arrive there within one to two minutes. If it doesn't, then please do check your spam or junk folder. Okay, so once you have logged in, your name will appear on the right hand side and your My Churches tab will appear. And this will have a list of any churches that you've selected for the surveys. So here you'll be able to see whether the church is part of the Church Bat Detectives or whether it's part of the National Bats and Churches study. And you'll be able to see here church details. Now with the church details section, you don't have to do very much. Um, but it's just to say that there is a box here if your church has declined to take part in the survey and that is that they've declined to take part not just in this season but in future seasons they do not want to be contacted again by the surveys um, please do put a tick in this box if you put a tick in the box by accident don't worry just untick it it'll be fine there is the option here for you to edit details if you'd like to if you want to add more detail or something is slightly wrong uh, you can also add in a phone number or an email address if you'd like of your church representative that you've been speaking with but please only do this if they have given permission for this and they'd like to be contacted further about the surveys you can also enter the these details at the end of the um, the questionnaire and the notes section so once you finish this and you've edited you can press save Okay, so let's focus on the questionnaire results. So when you click this button, enter questionnaire results, the first thing that you'll see is this big table. And it looks daunting, but it really isn't, I promise. And the most important thing is that there is something selected for each part of the church under each of these themes, under wall construction, under roof covering, roof lining, etc. You may find that this, the church that you are surveying doesn't have all of these church areas. It may not have a transept, for example. If this is the case, that's absolutely fine. There is the option to put in not applicable or not present. If the person that you've been speaking to is unsure, there's also the, uh, the option to put in other or unknown. If it happens to be that the wall construction, for example, is the same in all areas of the church. There is a nice button that says all uh, that allows you to very quickly enter that information. Now, importantly, I'm just going to put all for ease, but please do when you're um, when you're inputting this information, please do make sure it's accurate. If you were to Let's leave this one out. If you were to, for example, not put in anything for roof insulation and you try to go forward to the next section, you'll see that there's red writing saying roof insulation, select a value for each part of the church. So then, you know, you have to go into roof insulation and there's something that you haven't added. Once you've added something for every area of the church in each of those each of those sections, you'll be able to go to next and it will go through to the next section on your questionnaire. One thing that's worth noting in section four, the external lighting, is that some churches have sensors. So it makes question 13 and 14 quite difficult. So one thing, if that is the case with the church that you were, uh, you were surveying, when it says how often are the external lights on, 
please choose the option that says less than once a month. And under question 14, please just leave that blank and move on, clicking next to the next section of the survey. At the very end, there's a section for notes. Please do just mention in there that the external, that the external lights are on a sensor system. Now you can go out of this and it will save as you go along. And what you'll see is this amber writing that says in progress. At the end of it, when, you're, when you get to the end and you're happy and you click submit, this amber in progress writing will change to a tick and it will say submitted. Even when you submit the results though, you can go back in and edit just in case there's something that you realize that you really need to change. So now we'll move on to the BAT evidence records. So this will be slightly different depending on whether you're a BAT, church BAT detective or national BATS and churches study. So there'll be a few tabs for both of them that will be the same for both. So they'll each have a summary tab, a church layout tab and a BAT evidence tab. In the summary, it will ask you for the date of the survey and the time of the survey. And that needs to be completed in order to save these records. Under the church layout, this is where you're able to enter the, the images of the different corners of the church. Now to do this, you'll go to the purple, purple button that says upload image. By clicking that, you'll be able to access your files and this will work on your mobile, tablet or computer. The image has to be below a size of six megabytes. If you haven't got an image, don't worry. Um, you can just click this box here to say no image. Importantly though, you have to either upload an image or tick that no image is present. And this will allow you to save, save the record. You then have a bat evidence tab and you would only fill this in if you found evidence of bats within the church. So to add a line of evidence, you'd put in, you'd use this drop down list to select the area in the church, for example, the chancel, how many droppings you saw, whether you found bat urine. You have an option here to insert a photo. And importantly, when you finish this, click save and it will save that evidence line. For church bat detectives, you have a different tab, which is species. Um, this isn't compulsory, this is completely optional. If you have your own bat detector or you know the church already and you know the bat species that use it, you can enter that information here. So you'd use this drop down list to, to select which, which, bat, which bat species is using the church and also the verification method. So um, if you're using a bat detector, what type of bat detector or was it DNA analysis, etc. Once you've done that, you can save it and you can add multiple species. Once you've done this, you can save and finish. Um, if you haven't quite finished it, you can just press save. I'll go back to my churches. If you start doing it, but you aren't able to finish it in one go, don't worry, it will just say in progress here. Once you're happy and you've saved and finished, you'll see a green tick and it will say submitted. If you are doing a National Bats and Churches church, you'll, you won't have the species tab, but you will have the DNA analysis tab and you will have a sound analysis tab. You don't have to do anything with these two tabs. This is for us and the office to enter the information via um, that you've given us through the bat detector and through the droppings if you've sent any back to us. And this might take um, a month or so to, to be able to get that information and to put it into the system. So when you have entered the questionnaire and BAT evidence records, and you can see these green ticks and the, the word submitted, then you'll also notice that another button pops up, and this is Create Roost. So this is for the MBMP, so the National BAT Monitoring Programme's Roost Count. One thing that can really help understand bats is understanding roosts from year to year, this long term information. So if you have found bats in the church, it would be really, really valuable to be able to monitor that 
roost year after year to look at the numbers of bats using the church. If you have a look at this, when you click the button, you can have a look at a YouTube video to find out more about the National Bat Monitoring Programme's roost count and what you'd be expected to do. If you decide to take part, then you can click this purple button saying create roost and you'll then automatically be part of the National Bat Monitoring Programme and this church will be included in your list of roost counts. If you're unsure and you want to learn a bit more, you can always contact the National Bat Monitoring Programme team at mbmp.bats.org.uk or you could go onto the Bat Conservation Trust website and there's, a, there's quite a bit more to, to read about. I think that's about it with entering data for the Bats and Churches study. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact. My name is Claire and you can contact me at churches at bats.org.uk.